Okay. So it's a pretty scary one. Uh, Microsoft Teams is a very popular system that a lot of a lot of you are probably using um, if you are kind of a Microsoft shop. Um, and uh, the vulnerability that they um, just had and, and just fixed is that an attacker could create a tab um, in any of the channels in Teams, and then it was sufficient for someone to just click the tab, just get on that tab. Uh, to have the uh, authentication token stolen. And that authentication token could then be used uh, by attackers uh, to basically access all the systems uh, within Teams and other Microsoft um, uh, services Microsoft within the Microsoft platform to steal their email messages, steal their chat messages, uh, steal their um, OneDrive files, et cetera, et cetera. Um, now, for example, this is a quick video showing how uh, a hacker, uh, an attacker is, is, is stealing into another team's profile chats from the, uh, from the victim. And so the way that this worked is that uh, basically uh, Teams is extensible, as a lot of, a lot of systems these days, like um, whatever, Google Workspace have their Google um, app scripts. Uh, Microsoft Teams is also extensible. There's Microsoft Power Apps. So you can add additional workflows, automation workflows, and, and additional tabs, et cetera. Um, and so the, the problem is that uh, in the validation code that they had uh, for those extra tabs, uh, they verified, they, they thought that someone might um, create an attack. So uh, when they would load an element, an iframe, into that tab, uh, they would validate that this uh, URL starts with makepowerapps.com, so it doesn't come from from a uh, random domain uh, with with a random code. Unfortunately, uh, the problem is that uh, in the begin with um, part begins with part of of that of that frame. So someone could create a totally different code, put it on some other URL, uh, some other domain that the attackers control, like fake corp, for example. Uh, and they would just make it begin with what um, the validation rule expected. And then, uh, because they would host their own code, they would be able to access the, the token, the authentication token. Uh, and then, uh, unfortunately, again, this uh, was aggravated further because there is um, an endpoint, appspowerreps.com, uh, Microsoft, that, that would allow to exchange that token to another token for another system. Again, from Microsoft perspective, from accessibility perspective, that makes it easier. A user just authenticates once, and then you can reuse that across different systems, like get access to, to Microsoft Graph and uh, app dynamics, uh, and, and the dynamics apps, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, obviously, for attackers, they've made it a lot of easier, a lot easier because now uh, they could use for example, even automation flows to just start getting any new files, any new messages, start accessing different files on the user behalf, et cetera, et cetera. Right? So basically, they, they, um, they could access any, any data, any private data of that um, user that the attacker should not get access to. And so here's the whole flow. We will not <laughs> go into details of it. Uh, but basically, that was the flow, right? You get the attacker could create that iframe get one token, exchange it to other token, and then use uh, flows and other automation systems to, to retrieve uh, data from the victim. So this is a broken authentication um, uh, vulnerability. If we use um, OWASP, API Security Top 10 um, uh, language um, terminology. So to prevent that, first, again, strictly validate all data, so URLs, parameters, payloads, anything coming from 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 other users, uh, from the user uh, or other components of the application, um, zero trust is a is a good uh, attitude to have. Uh, don't assume that because someone is calling your API, uh, this something is your own whatever component of your application. Uh, any other component could be compromised. So any any API that you have should consider everything else to be potentially controlled by attackers. So everything needs to be validated. And again, when token exchanges are very dangerous, right? Because when one piece of your infrastructure gets uh, compromised, that means that attackers can, after that, go and compromise other things. 
other components. So um, consider adding explicit user approvals, uh, et cetera, et 